Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. Uh, if you subscribe to my channel, you probably know most of my videos are about Vespa. I'm probably biased towards Vespa. Um, I certainly like the vintage ones. The new ones are pretty, pretty dang cool and I got a couple of those as well. But maybe you've asked, you want to ask Robot what he thinks the worst scooter is. Um, and I love Hondas. I have Hondas in my own collection. I've been collecting Honda motorcycles and scooters for years. Uh, unfortunately, it's probably one of the most popular Honda scooters in North America of all times. This is the Honda Elite 80. It was sold in North America, including Mexico and Canada, from 1985 all the way into the early 2000s. It's way too long. Uh, so in 1985, it was quite new technology to have a fully automatic scooter with a CVT transmission. And this was kind of Honda's first four-stroke attempt at a automatic transmission four-stroke scooter. Um, the Honda Arrows, which are 50cc, 80cc, and 125 back in the early mid-80s, I thought those were better products even though they're pr quite quirky themselves. Um, if you're buying one of these now, I don't really recommend using it as a daily commuter. They just tend to have more problems than many other contemporary scooters uh, similar size to this. Well, first of all, there has to be some positives about it, why they sold so many of them and why it was so popular. Well, first of all, the price, it was quite inexpensive scooter over its lifetime. Originally it was made in Japan. Later they moved the factory that built these scooters down to Mexico. Um, the quality between the J Japanese one and Mexican built ones is about the same. It's just, I think they have some severe engineering limitations just from being an early sco design scooter. But first of all, I'll start with some of the most unique, interesting things I think about this scooter. It's definitely got the 80s angular squared off look. I kind of think it looks not that bad for how weird it is. Um, but you can open up this front compartment like well, nowadays that's called a frunk on an electric vehicle. So that's your storage. It's not nearly as versatile as most contemporary scooters that have a full under seat storage bucket. I'm talking everything from the genuine Buddy 125 to nearly all modern Vespas to even nearly all the new modern Honda scooters. They have a large under seat storage. Uh, this is very limited. You certainly can't put a grocery bag. You could put some documents. You could put maybe, you know, a book or two under here, and that's about as useful as a storage compartment is. But nonetheless, it's kind of unique and different. Kind of think it's cool. Then I'll move on to underneath the seat. You're, there's a lock for the seat. But just the gas tank and a battery under there. No storage whatsoever. Actually a little pocket in front of the battery. Maybe you could put a tools and some registration. But unlike pretty much any contemporary scooter that would have an underseat storage, this doesn't have that. It does include a little flat rack on the rear. Um, these do get pretty good mileage. The price was great on them. Um, but just nowadays, now that they've aged quite a bit, they're all pretty much almost 20 years old or older, all the way as old as, you know, 35 years old. They're quite old, so regardless of the mileage, they probably need some things. Um, another thing that's kind of neat, it's a smaller CC scooter that's a little bit larger and can accommodate a passenger pretty comfortably. It's got fold-out foot pegs, 10-inch uh, tires, it's got pretty crappy suspension. All right. Now I'm going to go on to some of the poor engineering on the scooter and why I hate it so much. I don't really hate it, but why I just don't think it's a good buy for anybody now that we're in 2020. Um, it's great if you pick one up for 500 bucks and want to tinker with it, but typically every time these come into our service department, I find lots of problems with them. All right, so I'm going to take off the covers and both on the left and the right side. It's got what you refer to as a vertical engine, hence why they're not able to put the under seat storage. Many of the early scooters had a motor where the cylinder and piston are upright. Uh, the first problem I see quite a bit with these scooters 
is they have this very long header that connects to this muffler and I've seen several of them crack in many different places and the muffler just falls apart. You can certainly weld it one or two times. Um, you know, I see a crack right here forming at that bracket right there. Um, but they just don't hold up that well in how they're mounted. I see a crack here, crack at the header down here. And the muffler from Honda is quite expensive and there's no like universal muffler. So a lot of times I see these still running. There's so many of them out there on the roads in San Diego. Uh, this whole silencer, this Kenny Bean style silencer is broken off and it's just a header and they just sound like no exhaust scooter running down the road. And it's rather expensive and there's only one source for a muffler and that's Honda. Uh, just basic 10 inch tires. Um, of course, something like the Buddy scooter has 10 inch tires. Uh, they're definitely not the most ideal size tire for the modern roads and going at higher speeds. Um, steel wheels. Uh, they're definitely simple. Originally they had tube type tires in there. So if you get a nail in there, you're going to just lose the pressure through the tube. Uh, not that easy to change the tires, but that's pretty much most modern scooters. You got to remove the exhaust. So no, no difference there. So on the front of the scooter, it's got that 80s angular look like I suggested. This headlight is kind of like an aero style headlight that matches the profile of the handlebars. For several years, they used a sealed beam headlight design. So when the headlight filament goes out, you only have one choice is to replace this whole entire headlight assembly. And it's rather expensive from Honda. Of course, the later models, I think in the 90s, the mid 90s, they did change it to the same design glass headlight, but it does have a replaceable H4 bulb. But this one still has the sealed beam light. So once you lose the filament on the headlight, you throw the whole entire headlight out. And there's only one source for a replacement headlight, and that's Honda. Or maybe eBay, and you're taking a risk by buying a used headlight. You know, who knows how much longer you have left on the bulbs and the filaments in there. Moving on to the very simple suspension system. There's very little dampening on both the front and the rear, so these things are noted to bounce. So just yesterday we serviced one of these and a customer asked me if there was an upgrade for the suspension. And I pretty much said, well, that's the way they, these things were. They really did not have much dampeners. They have a dampener, you know, the shock absorber, and I would say it's about three quarter inches in diameter. Uh, most modern contemporary scooters have a shock that's about three times larger. Uh, so just not very well engineered suspension system. It's a leading link, which is kind of a neat system. The axle goes all the way through. And when you hit the brakes, it actually uh, lifts the scooter versus dives. Um, the only problem with that is if you do lock up the front, these things tend to hop like crazy and they're pretty easy to lose control. They do have a pretty limited ground clearance. So if you take them around a turn, uh, they scrape rather readily. Moving on to the motor. Well, this was one of the first scooters with a contemporary CVT belt drive automatic transmission. They do have some quirky things like the roller weights are in grease. Uh, it's kind of messy when it comes time to service them and the roller weights really don't last any longer than the modern dry roller weight system. Uh, they tend to have lots of problems with the carburetor. They have a very unique carburetor that's different than many other four-stroke automatic scooter carburetors. Um, you know, pretty much the throttle cable acts on this vacuum diaphragm versus having a butterfly that opens. It's very different. It's kind of quirky. Sometimes there's problems with this. The chokes have problems. And the main area of problems, especially on the early ones, they did make an improvement to the, the intake manifold. These intake manifolds are known to leak, both at the O-ring seals and the rubber, you know, since the carburetor is so far out there and with the heat, it ends up cracking the rubber that isolates the carburetor from the cylinder head. And the last stab I'll take of the scooter is the performance. Uh, it's perfectly adequate for a very tight urban area. Uh, pretty much performs like a 50cc scooter. Many two-stroke 50cc scooters that are uncorked will outperform the scooter quite a bit. Uh, the top speed isn't much faster than a 50cc scooter. It's comfortably will do like 30, 35 miles an hour. Once you're doing 40, 45, the motor's roaring. And if you're going downhill and doing 50, it sounds like the motor's, they don't even do, do quite 50 down a hill. The motor sounds like it's gonna explode on this thing. So they don't have very good acceleration or hill pulling power. 
they do have the, the double size seat, so you could take two people, but performance wise, only marginal and close to what a 50cc scooter. A Buddy 125 would blow this thing out of the water in performance. So thanks for watching. I generally don't make too many negative videos, but I gotta hate something in the scooter and world. Um, and this is certainly a scooter that really doesn't belong on the roads now that we're in 2020 and later. Um, unless you get it for a song and a dance, 500 bucks or less. Uh, it's certainly something fun to tinker with and a plus and you still get parts for it both on the used market and directly from Honda so that's a plus but handling performance serviceability it's all gets a thumbs down from robot so if you wonder what Honda Elite models you know the Elite started in the 1980s they were tremendously popular for Honda uh, they kind of faded away by the the 2000s where they came out with other models such as the Reflex, uh, PCX, uh, Forza, there's Silverwing, there's Metro, Ruckus. Uh, those are all much better engineered scooters in my opinion. The Honda Elite 250 and the Elite 150 which was originally called the Spacey uh, 125, the Elite 250 was called the Freeway 250. I thought those scooters were engineered quite a bit ahead of their time compared to this Elite 80 that was kind of looked like it was engineered by the, the third grade class engineering team at Honda. Um, those scooters, of course, they've aged quite a bit. So you got to keep that in mind if you're going to go out and buy a Honda Elite 150 with that uh, ahead of its time pop-up headlight, which nothing else has really ever done, or the Honda Elite 250 which in performance wise was way ahead of its time. It performs like the Vespa GTS 300. I mean, Vespa GTS 300 obviously outhandles it, has much safer brakes and is, has a higher top speed and is quicker off the line. But the Freeway 250, Honda Elite 250 was one of the first freeway legal scooters in North America. Something that can sustain 70 miles an hour continuously and comfortably, uh, followed by the Honda Helix. Both those scooters were far ahead of their time when they were introduced in the 80s. So you might think I'm being negative towards Hondas. I've had every single Honda model pretty much from the Honda Elite, some of those Arrows. I've had a Honda Metro, Ruckus. Um, I certainly like Vespas more, just something I have more passion towards. But definitely stay away from the Honda Elite 80. Until next time, Robot here. Thanks for watching.